unanswerable questions of the universe. That's what we're going to conquer today. So, mm, first unanswerable question. If American cheese is such crap, and I don't mean American-made cheese, I mean American cheese. My sister calls it cancer cheese. It's those yellow slices of plastic that they pass off for cheese, right? If it's such crap, why do I like it so much? <laughs> and to second part that, when you have an off-brand American cheese, I mean, just some lesser known brand, let's say, or the store brand of American cheese, it's usually crap. It's usually very low quality. You taste it. Some of it has like a, a grainy texture. It's terrible. Some of it is like a little too sugary. Like it's a, it's a sweetness to it. American cheese should not be sweet. American cheese should taste exactly like Kraft makes it. And welcome to today's sponsor, Kraft American Singles, brought to you by Kraft. Yellow for your enjoyment. <laughs> I, I was eating off-brand American cheese. And then I bought some Kraft American slices because I was, I was just on like an American cheese kick. I was at Costco, I saw Kraft American cheese and it was much cheaper in bulk there. So I got it, brought it home, tried my first slice, my first Kraft single. I was blown away. I was blown away by how amazing that cheese is. That is, wow. If you, if you can stand American cheese or you like American cheese, awesome, get Kraft singles. They're the way to go. I guess it's like toilet paper. You get what you pay for. Buy them in bulk. It's cheaper. So that was the first question of the universe. Why do those who like American cheese actually like it? Because it's really not that good of cheese. If you really think about it, I like blue. I like gorgonzola. I enjoy many different cheeses. A good brie, very creamy. Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. Extra sharp cheddar. What are you doing? You need medium cheddar. What's wrong with you? Who, who hurt you? You need the sharp cheddar in your life. Okay? Cheese is great. Um, another question. I went to the dentist today. I celebrated with cheese afterwards. I went to the dentist today. And it's not the whole cliche of, like, they're just going to ask you questions while they're, while they're in your mouth, busy. No, I mean, it was more like they enjoy having a conversation with themselves, but it, but it's conversation that you should probably uh, pay attention to. You should probably like, interject with. You know, they're asking, and I'm not asking. They're like talking about their family life because they know that you are gonna have a kid soon, and and like, isn't that just magical? Uh, the kid thing's awesome, and you can kind of make noises because they have like three things of cotton in your mouth and your fingers in here and. Uh, it's magical. It's so magical. And I just, like, what? I guess it is that cliche joke. What did they want us to say? What? Why do that? Tell me a story. Tell me a story about your life. You're cleaning. You're like, yeah, you're number 24 tooth right there. I don't know why you've neglected that one. But uh, it reminds me of this one time when I was awesome. I'll listen to that all day. All day. If you make any kind of statement as a dentist or a dental hygienist that even remotely warrants a response, my initial thought is like, why, why are you doing this? <laughs> so that's, that's the next question of the universe is why are dentists and dental hygienists so communicative? No, that's not the right word. So conversational. Now it could be just to put people at ease. People don't like to going to the dentist. I, I guess that's like a trope, right? It's like a generic thing. People don't like the dentist. I don't mind the dentist. I floss all the time. They love me. I'm almost always improving. Like if I go to the dentist at a bad time, and they're like, your gums are made of cement. I'm like, yeah, that sucks. And then I go back and then my gums get better. So it's always, it's always pretty good. Um, what's the deal with raw eggs? I don't get it. People are really, really nervous about it. And, and studies after studies come out that the raw egg rarely contains salmonella. Like it's so rare. <laughs> and then you have all these different bodybuilders and, and people from history. Like think of like Bruce Lee, he'd make like a, a smoothie with bits of raw meat and raw egg. And my thought is if, 
if you're taking care of your body, if your stomach acid is to a certain point, like you're not, you don't have to take Tums ever because <laughs> you're not messing up the acidity of your stomach. You're not a coffee fiend, which throws off your stomach's ability to make acid. Then no matter what you put in there, it's going to die. It's going to die. And the odds of salmonella being present in those eggs is very low. So eat the raw egg. I'm not a doctor. I'm not giving you advice right now. I'm saying, like, if you're in a rush, you need to get a quick meal in. Crack four eggs open. Drink them down. It's quick. It's easy. I'm still alive as of September 10th, 2020. September 11th, Luke, dead. Like, whatever. Whatever. I'm not going to be taken down by some raw egg. Come on. Plus, when we were kids, we were we were making cookie dough. And we would just sneak buckets of cookie dough. We'd be like, oh, get the cookie dough. Like, it was... It was what we wanted, man. And, you know, Grandma was like, don't lick the batter. And she wasn't talking about salmonella. I mean, she cared about it. It maybe was mentioned. But what she cared about was you were a greedy little child. And you were going to eat the whole batter. The whole thing. There weren't going to be cookies. That's why we were making cookies. So people could have cookies. And we're there eating the whole batter, right? Grandma knew it was fine. Grandma knew a lot of things. Kind of wish she was here so she could laugh with me. So that's the third question. It's like, why is everyone freaked out about raw food? You really think our ancestors cared about raw food? I mean, I, I think we cooked things eventually. I think it was very important. But we ate some raw things too. But think of it like this. You're, have you ever read Hatchet? You ever read the book Hatchet? He survives by eating some raw eggs at one point. And that's, that's what I think of. If you were on a beach, you hadn't eaten for like a week you just saw an egg there. You're like, damn, if only I had a frying pan, I wouldn't starve. No, you would eat them. You'd crunch the shell, okay? And they're kind of creamy. It's nice. Kind of like swishing around your mouth, drink it down. It's not that bad. Like if you can handle the texture at first, it's a little weird, but you get used to it. It's good. Uh, hmm. That's what's going on in my life right now. Oh my God, nasal decongestant. Okay, so like a nasal spray. Two days ago, I was a little stuffed up, right? I wanted to get good sleep. I wanted my nose to be all unclogged. Excuse me, a little bit of gas from all those raw eggs, probably, probably dying. So <laughs> my nose is a little stuffed and I wanted to breathe well. So I found a nasal spray in our medicine cabinet and it wasn't opened yet. I open it up and silly Luke just sticks in his nose, you know, just chucks it back, hold it in there for a while, go to sleep, wake up. I usually sleep on my right side. It's like the majority of my sleeping time. Um, I wake up, my right ear feels like it has an earache. It's just like that old ache feeling. Did you ever get earaches as a kid? You know the feeling? And it's just, oh, like not a, it's like a pressure, a pain. It's not a good feeling. So I wake up and I'm thinking, I'm 31 years old now. I'm, I, have a, I have an ear infection. That's so weird. And as I'm going through the day, I just feel run down, lethargic, horrid, horrid. This, not good. So clearly I have COVID. And <laughs> I go home. I'm irritable. I just, I'm going to go lay down. I go lay down. I'm laying in bed, trying to sleep, can't quite sleep. Finally fall asleep, wake up this morning feeling great. And my wife, the next day, she she picks up the uh, the nasal spray. She's like, is this what you use? Because it expired like a year and a half ago. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so I'm just putting expired nasal spray up inside me. And that was great. Um, never using that again, ever. I thought it was maybe allergies or I have a cold or a, something. It's not. It's not that. Used an expired thing that dried out your sinuses and you lay on your right side so it, it messed up your sinuses. You know your sinuses are all throughout your skull? You know it's not just like here and in your cheeks, it's like all the way back. Like Sinuses are connected in your head. So, <laughs> <coughs> so that I guess is the next unanswered question of the universe is 
Actually, I don't have one. I don't have one for that. I was going to ask something along the lines of why do we use it or, or why do they expire? Hey, maybe that's it. Why does that expire? I get half-lives for, for the chemistry and stuff. Half-lives make sense to me. So is it a half-life of the, the chemical, the phenyl hydrochloride, whatever it is? Uh, is that the reason that it expires? And then after it expires, so it, so the, the chemical goes from chemical A, right? Breaks down into parts. So you have chemicals B, C, F, G, H, whatever. And then those cause some kind of bad reaction in your sinuses? I don't know. I'm not going to use it anymore. We threw that bottle out. And that's basically the last two days. A lot of work. Birthday. Get to eat cake today, two days later. The bakery didn't have the cake ready. My wife keeps beating herself up over this, and it's not her fault. You can't account for that kind of chaos, okay? <laughs> Who knew COVID was going to hit? Like, Stuff happens, right? So... She's going to come home. We're going to have some cake. And I'm going to upload this. And I want your help to figure out these questions. These super unimportant questions. I think I'm going to go have another piece of Kraft cheese. Hey, anyway, I'll talk to you soon with something a little more relevant. Okay? Something a little more attention worthy. In the meantime, let's check out over here. So you open up the curtain. We got blackout curtains because it's Phoenix and it's really hot out. And the wife's not here yet. The parking lot's really bright on camera. You wouldn't think it. It's like mid-afternoon. But, um, yeah, have a good day. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in another day or two.